Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out this. This is the Nikon L35AF. And I think it's a pretty incredible point and shoot camera that is a point and shoot, but still gives you just enough creative control to also have a bit of fun with it when it comes to photography. So first of all then, what I wanna do is show you the roll of film that I first shot through this camera, which was a roll of Ilford HP5. And that roll of film looks like this. So annoyingly, it didn't work. And it kind of links into how I've actually come to own this camera. So a few weeks back now, one of my friends reached out to me as he had just inherited some film cameras, wanted to know what they're worth, and importantly, if they worked. Having had a look at them, I pointed out that this guy was worth some money if it worked properly. So he let me borrow the camera for a weekend, and I put a roll of film through it. And it wasn't actually until I got to the end of shooting the roll of 36 shots in that Ilford that I discovered a problem. And that is the fact that this camera just doesn't rewind the film. You can hear it try, but nothing happened. Now what I did was I took it home, put it in a dark bag and pulled the roll of film out, which meant I initially actually saved the roll of film. The problem is I couldn't work out what the problem was and this camera doesn't really operate properly unless it has a roll of film in it. So I decided to quite literally sacrifice this roll of HP5, but it meant I actually discovered what was up. And it's pretty simple what's wrong, I should have spotted it beforehand. It's the two prongs that go into the top of the film canister that spin to rewind the film. One of them snapped clean off, which means there's a bit of an unbalance now. And what it's actually doing now is trying to push the film out of the camera rather than have the kind of twisting action that it should. So in terms of my mate trying to sell this camera, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare because he's gonna to have to try and advertise it and sell it as somewhat broken. And to a charity shop, it's not much use. So we actually came up with a bit of a deal. I own this camera now, but all of the revenue that I make from this video is going to go to a local charity. So I've set a reminder for a year's time to let me know and to go and check and I'll choose something. If you wanna know who that is in a year's time, then make sure you follow me over on Instagram because I probably won't mention it on here but it will be mentioned on there in a year's time. And it's probably worth talking about reliability when it comes to point and shoot cameras. Now, if you're gonna buy a point and shoot, there is definitely something you need to bear in mind. These cameras are all generally pretty old and generally fully electronic. And all of the electronic parts in here are gonna die at some point, and there's a very good chance that the part that you need just doesn't exist anymore as it's no longer been made, probably hasn't been made for like 20 years. So you're gonna find yourself with a problem. You're either gonna have a paperweight of a camera that you spent a lot of money on, or you're gonna to need to try and find a donor camera that doesn't have the same problem, and then also find a specialist that's able to carry out the work, which is also equally hard to do. So with cameras like this, because this isn't a cheap one either, this kind of sits at the 150 to 250 pound mark. So it's not like, Contax T2 expensive, but still enough that a lot of people I think will worry about them breaking. It's just something to bear in mind. Try and find a good copy that you kind of know a little bit about its history if possible. So that's how I ended up with this camera, but let's move on to actually what this camera is all about. Now, the name of this camera, L35 AF, it's a 35 millimeter lens on the front and it's got autofocus. This is Nikon's first ever compact autofocus camera and it came out in 1983. Now on the front of the camera has a 35 mm lens that's f2.8 and it's got five elements. Now the lens on the front of this camera is one of the big selling points. Having a fast lens at a really nice focal length is pretty key to getting good results out of point and shoots. The only downside I've found from the images that I've taken so far is it does flare pretty badly. Now that might be a bad thing for some and a good thing for others. It's probably up to you where you sit in terms of that, but you can see in some of these images on the screen that they are flaring and there's some pretty weird artifacts in some of them. Right next to the lens, you have a little ISO setting and you can kind of twist the dial next to the lens to change that. I also love the fact that this camera has that. Quite a lot of point and shoots, you can't set the ISO and it just reads the kind of DX coding off your film canister, which is great, but there's a lot of creative films out there now that go into the wrong canisters and sometimes they just cover up the DX code completely. You'll then have the wrong ISO setting or sometimes cameras just default to weird settings like really slow or really quick settings. I also really like the fact that you have control over it and you can set the camera to over or underexpose if you want to. Now I personally overexpose every roll of film I shoot by one stop. If you overexpose film, there's almost no negative effect. If you underexpose film, you quite often end up with muddy looking images. So I overexpose just for a little extra safety net. And being able to set the ISO is key to being able to do that. 
Now the way this camera meters is also pretty interesting. I'm not sure if the meter is the little sensor next to the lens or if it's actually inside, but because it's right next to the lens, when you put a filter on this camera, the camera will actually compensate for the filter you've applied. Now this is really handy for things like black and white photography. If you want to use your like, orange yellow filters, you don't need to remember to change the camera settings or the ISO to match because of that kind of filter the camera will just compensate for it. So that also is very, very helpful if you want to get into kind of slightly more creative black and white photography. Also next to the lens, you have a pretty weird looking switch. This is actually a backlight compensator. So what this does is it tells the camera to overexpose by a further two stops. And by doing so, what it's trying to do is if you're trying to take a picture of say somebody and there's a bright background, then your camera will try and expose for that bright background. But if you flick that switch, it's gonna bump it up two stops and hopefully expose for your subject instead. So it's handy that it's there. I personally haven't used it. And then one of the last features of this camera is a little switch up near the top corner. This is a self timer. I haven't used it. I have no idea how long it lasts. I'll stick it on the screen now, but it's handy to have it. Not something that I find myself using. Also, if the camera thinks it needs it, it will pop up the flash. If you don't like flash and you don't want the camera to shoot the flash, you can just push the flash back down and shoot and the camera will do its best to try and expose without it. But I personally quite like the whole point and shoot flash photography. It has a bit of a look to it, a bit of a vibe, and it's actually quite good. The meter and the flash seem very well paired up and you end up with some pretty good looking images. I find in some point and shoots, the camera just doesn't meter properly for how bright or how dim the flash is, whereas this seems to nail it every time. Then next up, we probably hit one of my favorite features of this camera, and it's in the name. It's the L35AF. This camera has autofocus, which for a point and shoot isn't that odd, but I really like how it's been kind of integrated into this camera. When you look through the viewfinder and you half press the shutter, there's a little gauge across the bottom that lets you know where the camera is focusing. Now this is really helpful because if you're trying to take a portrait, you can very quickly tell if the camera is focused on your subject or accidentally focused on the background. I find with a lot of point and shoot cameras that give you no feedback at all, you end up with quite a few misses just because you didn't know where the camera was focused. Having that little extra safety net, again, helps you get better images and less failures. I really like the integration of it, and it's one of my favorite features of this camera. So then who is this camera for? I think the answer is just about anybody. If you're a complete beginner, no skill in photography, but you wanna shoot film because you've seen it online, then this camera suits you. All you gotta do, stick your film in, set the ISO to match whatever film you just put in it, shoot the button 36 times, rewind the film, job done. You're gonna get some really good images that are gonna come out very well exposed. For the rest of us that like to call ourselves photographers, I didn't think I was gonna enjoy this camera because to me, point and shoot kind of deletes the photographer aspect. And I was a bit naive in that, I think, because this camera isn't really for that. If I wanna go and enjoy my photography with a small camera, I'll probably take my Rode 35. But that isn't what this camera's trying to do. This camera is more about if you wanna take a small camera and not really know you've got it, just be able to quickly snap some photos without having to think about the photography element, which was absolutely perfect for our trip to Bournemouth recently because it was super hot. We knew it was gonna be riding bikes. I just didn't have room for an extra camera. This was literally perfect. And the images from that day, I think look exceptionally good. And there's not much to not like about it. It's got a quick fast lens on the front. It exposes well, it has a pop-up flash, it enables you to set the ISO. If you wanna have some fun with filters and not worry about it, you can just slap different filters on the front. It's got a pretty common filter thread of 46 mil, so it should be pretty easy to pick them up as well. When it comes to price, 150 to 250 pound it seems to be on eBay. It sounds pretty steep, but in these ridiculous times of crazy point and shoot prices, for the features, it's actually a very well priced camera at the minute. And it takes AA batteries. A lot of old cameras take some really bizarre batteries. This takes AAs, the batteries you can still buy today. So much to love about this camera and I have really, really enjoyed using it. If you've got any questions about this camera, then please hit me up down in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please do not forget to like and subscribe. And if you wanna know how much money this video makes in a year's time, your best bet to follow me over on Instagram. Thank you for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.